people really yeah. appreciate that. When, we I are, want to ask you one question before yeah. you start. When did you start in the music business? Well, my music career started from 1968, you know. Oh, as before I was conceived. <laughs> <laughs> little little yeah. most before my one I born. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's really a, a while, you know. Starting from a little thing, you know, but you know, from yeah. that time I love the music. But I love music from I've been about, you know, ten year old. I've been listening to, you know, great artists yeah. like Delroy Wilson, and, you know, what I mean the Heptones, and you know, I've been I've grown in a community in Jewsland, you know, my show name Jewsland, mm -hmm. right? with surrounded with music. You know, Del used to be around Sandy Lane and. You know, grew up in an environment of music surrounding and dance used to keep every weekend of World Crescent. I used to jump to my window and go, go a dance, you know what I mean? So, I've, you know, until my first money what I get in my career, you know, in life, working, I work on the boulevard and did a chop out at Chent and I go work and raise about 60 pounds. <laughs> no long time. Well, long time. And take my first money and buy this little dulcimina thing. And dulcimina, mm -hmm. one side is turntable and one side. Mm -hmm. But that's another part of the history. There's so much things. Yes, I. Yes, I. So big up. We just give thanks for the question and just knowing that so well into why. Happy to have been, been you here, you know what I mean? Yep, Thank you so yep, much. Yep. All right. Yeah. Let me ask you this now, Father Man, you know. You know, you, 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 you wrote a book on this great book, right? Mm -hmm. Been getting a lot of good reviews. All right. Why is protecting and prefer, preserving Jamaica culture so important to you? So I come out and I see culture. I see life happening. And I find that a lot of people use the culture, dispose of it, and make enough money from it. And the people who came from the culture don't benefit from it. A whole heap of artists die broke. A whole heap of artists die without any kind of ownership of their intellectual property. Artists give so much to the world and the industry and don't know what to do. So. I decided to put together this book so that artists can understand how to harness the possibilities from the culture. Whether you are a DJ, a producer, even a chef, um, you make food, you make sauce, whatever you make that comes from this blessed place, because we create enough things here. You can harness it, create it, turn it into a business, package it properly, share it with the world, and own it. Because without ownership, you lose what you have. And that has been the problem with Jamaica's culture. Jamaicans don't own Jamaican culture. And if you don't own it, you can't dictate it, dictate where it goes. A lot of the music that was made, as you know, yes, yes. is not owned by Jamaican companies even. Yeah. This, this music is, is licensed to companies abroad, abroad. And they make billions. Last year, the record business made 25 billion US dollars. A lot of that was reggae and dancehall music. Wow. Now, did artists make that? Did Jamaicans make none of that? We don't know. The only way is if they own the masters. They own the publishing. They're getting royalties. And, and by and large, reggae and dancehall itself accounts for only 1% of global music consumption. Mm -hmm. So there's something missing in terms of how we're packaging it, how we're marketing it and promoting it and getting out there. It's not that the young boys don't know what to do. It's just that the culture itself, it's leaving them. They don't know how to package themselves for mass consumption and, and, and crack audiences and reach number one on World Music Views chart. Because that's another thing that sparked the book. I see other cultures using their culture. Not um, North Africa and the Middle East. They're using their culture. Afrobeat using their culture. Thames just debuted at number one on the Billboard chart. Just being herself. Just being herself. She debuted at number one, the first mm -hmm. African, first Nigerian to ever do that. Mm -hmm. Now, we had this before where Sean Paul debuted using Jamaican culture. So Sean Paul is in the book telling us yes, how to I, do I, that. Yes, I, I, and, 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 that, and, and saying about that, that it just lead me to the next question too. Uh, the next question is, in your new book, you interview a number of Jamaican musical artists, sports, personality, including... Shaggy, 
Sean Paul, use and bolt, and you did, you choose to feature these person in your book. Yeah, man, yeah, man. These are, these are people, so I have world music views, and it, it gives me the opportunity to talk to a lot of artists. I need uh, to interview you after this. <laughs> we need to flip this interview. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but because persons kept coming up to me and asking me, yo, how do you get in the music business? How do you make it in the music yeah. business? I interviewed people who made it. Yeah. Not just in the music business, but, but in the business world. Right. Usain right. Bolt told right. me. That's what I was going to say. For you, in not just yeah. music, this Usain Bolt is a, one of our great, our yes. greatest art. Yes. I mean, our greatest <laughs> runner. And he's now he's now in the music business. Yeah, but before music, he made his fortunes as a sports star. Awesome. But he said that it was the Jamaican culture that he used as you see that thing he does at the end of the race, yeah. where him dance. Yes. That's Jamaican. Gully creep. <laughs> Remember uh, gully creep come from, yeah. from Rose's corner, you know. Yes. Um, yes. All these dances, Nannyville yes. dances, that yes. ding dong creep. Yes. This is Jamaican culture yeah. that Usain Bolt put on the global stage. True, true, and true, he said true. it's because of that charm and, and energy that he got from dancehall that he was able to leverage and make these big deals. He has a lifetime deal now with Puma. Wow. No and other, that no so other runner has that kind of deal. Wow. And, and mind you, you saying he's the fastest man in the world. In the world. But when you couple the fastest man in the world with Jamaican culture, you get magic. Yeah. And that's what you saying really is yeah, magic. Definitely. When you couple a good song by Sean Paul with Jamaican culture, you Not get magic. magic. And that's what we are as a people. Yeah. We're magical people. Jack Scarpia boss. Thousands of people, <laughs> whether <laughs> whether directly so, or indirectly. indirectly, it's so true. It's man. magic. Yeah, it's you magic. see where you say you start from? Yeah. The streets making sixty pound. Yeah. The young boys that laugh are you know like sixty pound, <laughs> but but you took it from the streets, yeah, from the streets. and put it on records yeah. and put it on performance yeah. and and when you go and take up your flag and. And for those who know Jack Scarpia, when him goes, so this is a uniquely Jamaican thing. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But we do it all the time over the world. Yeah. And you know what I mean? We, 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 we live for a flag and we take it all over the world and feel proud of doing it too, you know? And, you know, let me tell you, there's so much. But it leads me to the next question with the, the man, you know. Say, the book explains how to use culture to make money. Yes, yes. You understand me? Especially in the music, food, hospitality, industry. Take a talk to us about this. So, oftentimes, the creative industries, in Jamaica especially, don't speak the same language as the business industries. It's like they're speaking two different languages. The, the creative man just want money just to be creative. Yeah. The businessman is saying, Oh, you have to prove a track record of earning for me to invest in what you're doing. True. And this book explains how both can come together and understand that through passion and investing in people who have this magical ingredient and helping them to structure their businesses with um, registering your LLC, registering your publishing company, yeah. registering your, your, your production company, your media Logic. company. And then when you can show a track record of earning, you take that to an investor and say, boss, for the last five years, I've been making $5 million in publishing. Mm -hmm. Can you invest in my future earnings? So for the next 10 years, I'll be making $50 million. Can you give me an advance of $50 million and I license this to you? And this book shows how to do that. This book even shows you how to use your brand, Jack Scorpio. Yeah. Could be listed on the stock exchange Thank you. with NFT and security token offerings because it's a I different time now. It's digital. You know, you have moments. I've seen pictures with you that are iconic that could be turned into NFTs. And you could you could put that on blockchain. Um, you could register Jack Scorpio and all the, the music that you own and curate and the future music that you'll curate and turn that in our whole business. Wow. The book explains and Earl Chapman um, breaks it down how um, artists can artists who own their music, who have who are rights owners, can use that for security token offerings. But you have to have a business, so you can't just be a singer yeah. and say, "Yo, me a singer." Yeah. You as a singer is the product, yeah. but the business is the entity that's yeah. going to own the product. Yes. And artists need to start thinking as businessmen yeah. and acting like artists. Because yeah. we need the swag, you know. Yeah. We need to act like artists. Yeah.